Greg Mahoney with Building Code Education and uh, buildingcodeed.com and we're going to look at a water heater today just to kind of a inspection of a basic water heater installation and uh, probably should start off by saying that the, oh, the installation instruction should be available from the manufacturer and that's something we can refer to as we're doing our inspections. Also the water heater should be sized appropriately and in this specific water heater this is a five bedroom house with three baths. It has a first hour rating of 90, which is uh, code compliant. What they're trying to avoid is having a large house with a really small water heater. Um, and we'll go ahead and start from the bottom and work our way up. Down here we have a, a base is about right around 15 inches. Um, the code requires that actually the burner be 18 inches above the ground. So um, this one is um, in compliance. Uh, there's not a pan required unless it's above a floor ceiling assembly or a um, ceiling a roof assembly or floor subfloor assembly where finishes could be damaged. Now we'll go ahead and, and look at the um, gas pipe. This is a replacement water heater. So this gas pipe is existing, but it really was never um, supported properly. So I'd probably mention that um, this gas pipe requires uh, support. We also have our shutoff valve. And then we come down to our sediment trap, which is downstream from the sediment, or downstream from the shutoff valve. As we move up, we have our um, seismic straps. The requirement is that they're at third points, and then also at least the lower one to be at least four inches above the controls. We move up here and see that we have our temperature and pressure relief valve and the pipe, the discharge pipe, the discharges to the exterior of the building. Uh, this one is in hard-drawn copper. Code used to say hard-drawn metal. Now it says pipe that's appropriate for the temperature. So we wouldn't want to see PVC. We could see, we could see uh, CPVC, which is rated for hot water, but regular PVC wouldn't be appropriate for that installation. As we move up, we see this water heater is equipped with a flue damper, so it's going to need electrical connection. It's plugged in. That's an uh, um, energy efficiency measure. It, it closes when the water heater is not in use. Um, not fired, so it saves energy. We go up to the flue, which uh, we want to make sure that the flue is the same size as the, the uh, draft hood. In this case, it's three inches, and it ties in also with the, the vent from the furnace. We can see single wall is okay for a vent connector. You can use single wall within the same space as the appliance. Uh, but then when it transitions through the ceiling there, it has to um, be converted to a dual wall or B-vent. We also have our fire blocking, the tin sheet metal fire blocking um, is required by code. And then if you can see way back there, there's a valve to shut off the water and that's just so that you can replace and, and maintain the appliance. Um, it's really fairly simple inspection. Probably the only other things you might want to take a look at are the discharge point for the temperature and pressure relief valve. Um, it's not supposed to be closer than six inches or higher than, than two feet above ground and not supposed to be threaded. There's not supposed to be any valves between the, the um, temperature and pressure relief valve and the discharge point. There's also requirements for the termination of the vent. It should be at least, or it's required to be at least 12 inches above the roof deck. Um, and that's about it for this inspection. Um, you, can, you can view this video on our website billingcodeed.com. We also have a guide that goes along with this inspection that kind of walks you through the inspection. And we'll also provide some other free content on the website.